That's insane. I think Kirby's gonna love that scene. She's gonna find that hilarious. Generic control in the back goes me here. Back with some more Dragon Ball related reactions. Today we are reacting to Dragon Ball Z abridged behind the scenes Saiyan Saga by Totally Not Mark, but it's uploaded on the Team Four Star channel. I guess they did it for the very first one, but then the next two are uploaded on his personal channel. Last week I finished up DB Simber, which Totally Not Mark was brought in as a special guest for the very last DB Simber, where they talked about the best sagas of Dragon Ball. You can check out the finale and find out what the top three sagas of Dragon Ball are according to Team Four Star. I'll leave it right up there. I'll also link down below in the description. I'm pretty sure. It's also in a playlist on my channel with all my other DB Simber videos. You can check that out. But uh, some people were telling me to react to this in the comment section. Uh, Nick Landapator commented on the video, which, Nick, thank you so much. The fact that you might be watching this video just means so much to me, dude. I will ever, for always, appreciate that. That means so much to me and says a lot about you. And, like, I'm so glad that I get to watch your videos. And, like, you're a great guy when you're not on camera as well. That's absolutely insane. It means a lot to me. Thank you, everybody that's here. Even my patrons. Thank you to videos there early. A lot of time on the paywall channel. Couldn't do this without them. I've never seen Dragon Ball, only Dragon Ball Z Bridge. There's a playlist on my channel if you want to check that out and see someone that knows absolutely nothing about Dragon Ball. Learn through the abridged. And I'm going to show my best friend Dragon Ball Z Bridge next month. So we're going to start recording that here very soon. But let's go ahead and jump on into behind the scenes. I haven't seen these videos. I didn't know they existed. All right, hey, I do read every single comment. Uh, and this is Dragon Ball Z Abridged <laughs> Behind the Scenes, Episode One. Dragon Ball Z Abridged might very and well be over, totally not but that doesn't mean that the gang behind the explosively popular internet I can't wait series to show Kirby. don't have even oh, more stories so to fun. share regarding their time on the show. Earlier this year, I decided to reach out that to Scott Blue Kaiser Neko Frerix, a writer and director behind the massively popular series, if he would be open to the idea of a mini documentary discussing the stories, mini do the Dodge shirt. and tribulations that came with working on one of the most popular internet series in history. Ever. Thankfully, yeah, literally ever. Yes. And so, along with co-creator and founding member of Team Four Star, Nick. 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 Lanny Patur Landis, they patiently I hope you're watching, and enthusiastically dude. sat down with me for two hours answering all the questions two I had hours? regarding the show and its production. And so I figured what better place to start than where it all began. The same long saga. years ago. Which is I'm not gonna spoil anything. I'm not gonna spoil anything. They covered the top the top uh, sagas in the last TV Simber. Also, Nick, you said uh you're not worried about moving on the new better and how did you guys better to things. work together, and what was it like in that very first episode's writing room? If anybody knows anything about abridging, Little Karibo started with the Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridge series. Mm -hmm. Nick and myself episode 84 went live on Tuesday. 101, Monday. We kind of took yeah. inspiration from him and started making our own shows. That's against the rules, isn't it? Screw the rules, I have money! As yep. soon as you came on the scene with uh, Lupin the Third Abridge, yeah. I feel like everybody kind of glommed onto you because your editing was like next level compared to literally everything else that was out there at the time. Which is really silly because if you go back and watch any of those, they look it's terrible. rough. <laughs> but still, back in the day, it was I mean, a badge YouTube. of pride that you wear if you had an intro made by Kaiser Neko on your abridged series. Yeah, actually, yeah <laughs> really? Like intros. Um, and then you, Masako, Vegeta 3986. Yeah, and um, Rissa. You guys decided to start abridging the movies for yes. Dragon Ball. You we wanted to do the Dragon Ball movies because... Wait, uh, they started the what movies? What idiot would do the entire show? That's stupid! It's <laughs> stupid! Stop being stupid! Eventually they Isn't that little creeper like, hey. right there? It literally became a matter of, just ask him. Mm -hmm. No, but do it. No, but do it. He goaded me so hard into asking <laughs> you if you would join me in working on Dragon Ball Z abridged. And the funny part was, so... We, I presented it to you, and you said yes, but you had conditions. Which yes, were... I, I absolutely. I was like, you know what? Like with your editing and uh, everybody in this room's kind of like style put into what we want to do, I think it could be something fantastic. Having already experienced the process of abridging some of the Dragon Ball movies, when it came to joining forces ah. with Kaiser, Lenin was adamant so kinda... of two things before moving forward. One, that he had a permanent spot in the writer's room. And Understandable. That he would finally get his chance to play <laughs> the same Vegeta. Prince. Vegeta, Vegeta yes. Green, Kaiser, Lanny, and the third founding member, Takahata 101, set out Curtis, on what eventually become DBZA's first ever episode. And the first night was actually a lot of fun. Double shot! No! Uh -huh. Give me the mic! What? No, come, no, on. come on, man! Give me the mic! That's the real attack now. No, it isn't. Okay, where we came up with the Vegeta Nappa dynamic because while we were divvying up roles, Taka was like, maybe I could do the maybe. What about Nappa? <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because nobody wanted to play Nappa. Who wants no, what, to play what? Nappa? There were very few people that like, really wanted wanted roles. We knew immediately that uh, that Moscow would be playing Goku and Goku. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, although, 
in the first episode, you might remember that Vegeta 3986 played him just because he. Oh, yeah. He, he believed in fair distribution of roles, but we very quickly decided against that in terms of just trying to put out a better product. Yeah. But yeah, that was well, nice. We came up with a bunch of stuff and it was really fun. It was really, it was experimental. Um, it was a little bit complicated because those first, the first half of the season, I'd say, is a lot of experimental stuff trying to find our ground. The first 10 episodes like, were rough. Like you do in college. We experimented, we tried out some things, some things worked, some things we decided did not. And that's how, and that's how uh, season <laughs> one kind of began. Yeah, fair enough. Experimentation yeah. was the order of the day, throwing idea after idea at the wall to figure out what would stick. With the show oh, finding its start in the late 2000s, jokes would often rely on non sequiturs, pop culture references, and early internet that, humor, for lack of a better term. What's his name? Are, Mark from MySpace or something? Are you a Yoshi? Despite a lack of experience and production value, however, the team's natural chemistry and love for the series shone through, and the first episode was released to immediate success. During the height of Abridging's popularity, your show gained traction right away. What was that like? Oh, it was immediate? Because, yeah, the whole Abridged scene was really taking off. You had a bunch of different shows, you had a bunch of different what creators, year was that? and I can't deny the fact that getting a bunch of the creators with the most popularity at that time and then putting them on the second most popular anime franchise in the world at the oh, time yeah. was definitely a definitely um helped accelerate our uh, our growth, growth. <laughs> oh i remember God, that, uh, cracking at you a few fun. times because on your personal channel you at this point had made like a 10,000 or 20,000 subscribers oh, yeah. special. <laughs> and we put out the ads like on each of our individual channels announcing that we were going to do Dragon Ball Z. Oh, the old and, YouTube. You know, we had the channel ready. We had like a video on it. I think it was one of the ads or maybe all five of them. I can't remember. But Last as soon as we in. put that up there, people started flocking to that and it had like... 20, 30, 40,000, 50,000 overnight. And we, I'm like, hey, that's are, you ready with that 10, are you ready with the 20, are you ready with the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we made a, an over 9,000 subscriber, like video after that was outdated one. Yeah. Which, you know, you wouldn't think <laughs> back then there are so many people out there nowadays with 2 million subscribers, 3 million subscribers, yeah, 14 million like, subscribers. We feel like, we feel like a relatively small fish in this pond at this point. But, yeah. But at the time, yeah. well, at the time that was over so 10, much thousand subscribers in a week was insane. I remember you had to have a thousand to have like a, your own went from banner on your channel. Passion project carried on the backs of a few friends scattered across the globe to hosting their very first <laughs> the panel issue. at Yomacon 2009. This would be the very first time wow. that the cast of Dragon Ball Z Abridged would be in the same room together, accompanied by none other than the creator of the abridging format himself, Little Karibo. Wow. What was the most really? unexpected challenge that came from creating season one? And which Little Karibo now, later, later joined. a lot of challenges because one of the things that you'll notice is that we cut a lot of the fighting, uh, mostly because it's been a difficult process to learn how to make fighting funny for us. Uh, especially considering that a lot of the time, yeah. the fighting itself it's supposed to be serious. offer a lot of opportunity for talking, for dialogue, humor, and we don't want to just slap Ed, Ed, and Eddie sound effects on top of it and call it a day. So when we got to the actual big fight with Goku versus That's Vegeta, a funny image. it was this process of how do we balance out the fighting with the funny. Can. Kyle, what? No. Time. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. With the spotlight firmly on Goku and Vegeta, characters like Chaozu, Yamcha, and Ten Shinhan didn't end up receiving a lot of focus early oh, no. on, Papa. resulting in underdeveloped, half-realized characters <laughs> during the Saiyan Saga. Knowing that Krillin would play a larger role in future arcs, no most knows. of the energy regarding secondary character development fell onto him. And although the issues would be remedied in future seasons, during the Saiyan Saga, the supporting cast lacked any meaningful established character or personality. With that said, however, there was one obvious exception. I am hilarious and you will quote Everything I say. Nobody really thought about Nappa at the time when we were. But uh, Nappa's like a favorite. With this stuff from the we, abridged. We were like, oh yeah, the big characters, big moments later on, Frieza, Cell, all this stuff. We didn't really think about you know the the secondary characters like especially throughout the Saiyan saga, Raditz, Nappa. <laughs> but yes. as soon as Taka and I started like going back and forth 
like we tend to do. He and I, we bounce off each other very well when it comes to uh, writing yeah, certain you, scenes. You guys synergize incredibly well in the writing room, it, and which is why the whole Napa Vegeta dynamic kind of evolved. You two kept bouncing. Oh off yeah, because each those other, are two voice actors. And we realized no, this is Napa suddenly became the strongest part of season one, and that's that's kind of what's, crazy what's to me. It? Yeah, I oh, guess well, it kind of could be. Fun getting here, right, Vegeta? 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 Vegeta. Vegeta. And he comes back as Ghost Nappa, Nappa because they just couldn't kill him off. During season one, what was it like when the time came to kill him off? Were you at all? <laughs> <laughs> that first conversation we had, <laughs> that first night when we came up with the dynamic of Vegeta and Nappa, we They're knew like, that was oh, going no. to be something that people glommed onto. We came up with the concept of Ghost Nappa the first night. That that is how really? strong we felt about Nappa. It's true. It's true. We were so afraid. Very of smart. Kill, of actually letting him die because <laughs> well, does like react to that as well. Character in a show. Gates for that everyone will glom onto is like that is the funniest guy. That's the character that whenever he's on screen, everyone's going to find. Like, I am hilarious, and you will quote, quote everything, everything I, say. I say. Yes, that, there's a reason we wrote that joke for Nappa especially. Um, and it doesn't help that in that first season we were still finding okay, our I'm not Pokemon. ground. Like we were, we were tr still trying to find our flavor, our, our method. Um, and <sighs> to be honest with you, Nappa was our funniest character. And the idea of what in the world is that? Was scary. And so it was a Magnum yeah, PI of Nappa. Nappa. And <clears throat> if I could change anything, I probably would have not come up with Ghost Nappa. Because he never actually went anywhere or did anything in no. season two. He kind of provided a he, couple he of jokes. He was he was he was he's literally like a, a bridge. beta for what we did with Kami and Nail. Yeah. If if anything. Oh yeah. Those characters, like what happened with them, were far far better examples. But the reason that Ghost Nappa did sort of work in places later on was mostly the fact that, like. Piccolo, Vegeta is alone on Namek. So having a part of, is it actually and Ghost Nappa or is it part to? of psychosis to bounce off of was a little bit of something there. Something that we've never actually confirmed one way or the other, inside or outside the writer's room, actually. Yeah, we, we actually don't have a concrete answer for that. Yeah. <laughs> Over the course it, of it exists. Months, the team was approaching completion of the Saiyan saga. With the death of their most popular character, Team Four Star found themselves without a safety net moving forward. And while fans were anxious that the show would have oh, quality, the team's that writing instead skyrocketed as they found themselves prepping for what would become their very first season finale. Season finale. How did your writing style and method change between episodes one and ten? When we were writing episode one, we had never worked together before. No. We did not know each other's style, so we were literally throwing in like, oh hey, you made a joke in your show like this, let's let's reference let's make the open joke. bar joke from Lupin the Third Episode One. Uh, oh, uh, th this, oh, this, and we were also pulling from what people I outside haven't of, heard of that. you know, the three of us to be like, hey, what, what would be good here? So, like, that's where the, the fighting over the Raditz's mic joke came from, the actor switch mid thing. Eventually, Kaiser, Taka, and myself, we got a lot more comfortable just working amongst each other, and we got comfortable with, with each other's styles. And so, uh, as we went through season one... Was there a behind uh, the scenes for, uh, looked Elsa? outward significantly less. And we uh, cool. just refined our ideas Man, amongst great. ourselves. <laughs> yeah, it, it's sort of interesting when you think about character development in a in an abridged series. But that kind of is what ended up happening. We ended up developing our version of these characters over the course of that first season and into the second season. In fact, as something you'll see is that by the end of the second season. The characters are now where exactly where they are for all of the third season. Yes. But over the course of the oh. first and the second, you can see our writing for them change, hmm. develop, and... Specifically, the finale is actually, I think, where Vegeta and Goku actually kind of come into their own because yeah. that's where their dynamic is formed and that's where we had to figure out exactly what we wanted their dynamic for us to be. Yeah. And, of course, it's just as antagonistic as it was in yeah, the actual show. show. Alright, Let's hear those bones. The squeaky toy. What the? <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious! <laughs> While doing away with I think Napa, Kirby's gonna love that Napa scene. Being gone, She's gonna find like that hilarious. That we had to climb over, and now it's like, okay, now let's write for these two characters and still make it funny and enjoyable. And it's kind of great because Goku switches out for Napa. 
uh, with that Cloud Cuckoo Lander, the guy who's constantly putting Vegeta and testing Vegeta's patience <laughs> is suddenly replaced by a guy who can also hit back. Mm -hmm. uh, which, yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. How will our heroes bring back their fallen compatriots? Dragon Balls. What new dangers will present themselves? Has anyone really not seen this show already? I, that was me. In the next season of Dragon Kirby Ball hasn't Z seen either. Bridged. She's seen a couple like moments, but never like the actual thing. From simple internet humor among a few friends across the globe, from just another abridging series <laughs> of, of little Karibo clones. By 2009, Team Four Star had begun wow. the process of a wow, series that would eventually be Nick's called so a young. recognized parody production. They would go on to host numerous panels across the world, and oh, after having talking. established a new distinct writing style, <laughs> all the while outfit. completing their very first season of DBZA. The episodes and subsequent seasons to follow would only further cement themselves as the professional production company they would ultimately become. To see that success and to follow Team Four Star behind the scenes for their Frieza saga, click the link on screen now to see part two to this documentary series. Which I believe is on his Thank channel. So much for Which, if you all enjoyed this video, I will definitely do the Frieza saga next. Like, I'll watch it off camera if I have to. <laughs> like, that's actually really cool. I, I didn't know these videos existed. I didn't know they did a behind the scenes. I'm sure somebody probably told me in the comment section of a Dragon Ball Z Bridge video, but that was also like three years ago? Wait, was it three years ago? Pretty yeah, it was three years ago when I did Dragon Ball Z Brit. No, wait, because my channel got deleted May 2020, and that was like right after I had saw episode 60 part one. So then people had to wait like a month or two for me to re-upload videos onto this channel before I dropped episode 60 part two. I had already recorded it, and my channel got completely deleted. So that was just ruthless, but. Oh man, this is great. It was cool seeing like Nick and Kaiser like that was that was really cool and Mark asked some really good questions. But the first season was definitely rough the first 10 episodes. Everybody is like warning Kirby about it like, "Yes, we know the first 10 episodes are going to be bad." I'm literally like I tell her about it every single day. I'm literally like, "We get the Dragon Ball Z bridge. It's going to be crazy. You're going to love it. Everyone's going to love the videos." It's going to be insane. I'm super excited for it, and I hope you are too. Um, actually, this might bridge us to that, because episode 11 of SAO Bridge went live today. So, the day of recording this, which is Saturday. So, yeah, if I do these the next three weeks, that'll get us almost to the end of SAO Bridge, which will, as soon as we're done with SAO Bridge, we're jumping into Dragon Ball Z Bridge. And the first, like, couple episodes, we're just going to fly through. So, I'm super excited for that and I hope you are too. I hope you're subscribed and I read every single one of your comments. Leave some down below. I hope you have a great one for the rest of the day. Hopefully I made you smile. But until next video, take care and keep the music.